The year promised so much in Formula One. It began with a Benetton blitz by Michael Schumacher, but events at Imola put the sport on the front page of every newspaper around the globe. Roland Ratzenberger died in practice. And then, the inconceivable. Ayrton Senna, the crown prince of his profession, was dead. The season continued with Damon Hill playing catch-up. Officials enhanced his chances by ousting the Benetton team for infringements. It went down to the wire in Adelaide, where Schumacher lost the plot. Hill got a little too hot. And Nigel Mansell picked up the lot. A very difficult year indeed, and obviously very disappointing for the team, uh, for Damon especially. But uh, when there's a loser, there's a winner. And I have to say congratulations to Michael. He's done a fantastic job all year. Many congratulations, Michael. Thanks. <sighs> Can we go now? Michael Schumacher may have waited till the final round for his title, but on the World 500 bike stage, no such anguish for Aussie superstar Mick Doohan. The toast of the coast was in devastating form on the Honda. Third, behind John Kaczynski and Luca Catalora at the creek, started the year on a conservative note, but after that he was harder to catch than Carl Lewis at an indoor track meet. The record shows he had 14 starts for an incredible nine wins, three seconds and two thirds, topping the scorecard, 317 points to Catalora's 174 and Kaczynski's 172. Unquestionably, my motor sportsman of the year. The Honda team's been working real hard all year and the Michelin's been perfect. They all fuel everything. Um, so I owe a lot to a lot of people, especially Dr. Costa and, um, you know, the Italian people that helped me back in 92. Without them, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have a leg, so I'm happy. <laughs> Stateside and two men totally dominated their respective categories this year. NASCAR's Dale Earnhardt and IndyCar Racing's Al Unser Jr. Earnhardt couldn't break his Daytona 500 hex. The big one went to Sterling Marlin in Illumina, but after that, the man in black was on a roll. With three races to go, the championship was all his, as he tied Richard Petty's all-time record of seven Winston Cup crowns. Team Penske proved the class act of the IndyCar set, with Al Jr., Paul Tracy and Emerson Fittipaldi sharing everything in their team machines made the year the most successful of his career and he also picked up the Indy 500 and kept defending champ Nigel Mansell winless on the tour. In Australia, our V8 touring car formula went from strength to strength. Mark Scaife opened the Shell National Tour with victories at Amaru, Sandown and Simmons Plains, causing some concern he might just go all the way. Defending champion Glenn Seaton stopped the rod at Phillip Island with a pair of victories, and then they moved to Lakeside, where the Holden Racing Team stress-tested the Armco, thanks to Peter Brock and Thomas the Tank Engine. Dick Johnson was in superb touch, winning the opening heat, and then running down Larry Perkins in the second till he hit some oil and belted the boards. Seaton sizzled at Winton, taking both heats in a canter. Then it was on to Eastern Creek, where Brocky gave the fans a touch of nostalgia. He came up with a double, and it seemed all too easy. Mark Scaife was the man at Malala. He led a Winfield team blitz at the placings, but a week later, two-litre beater Tony Longhurst came from nowhere to win a heat at Wanneroo. Alan Jones broke his duck for the season in the second, then it was on to Oran Park for the final. Poor Scaifey spent more time in the dirt than Don Burke, as Seaton's Peter Jackson team stole the spotlight completely. Young Mark had the crown, and Seaton the runner-up spot. Young Glenn clinched pole for the Tui's 1000, which turned out to be the most memorable mountain marathon ever. The rains came, which produced a classic confrontation between Peter Brock and Larry Perkins. Dick Johnson and John Bow were on a high in the dry until Craig Lowndes arrived and played Panorama Party Pooper. Brocky had one of his rare Bathurst wall bangers late in the day, leaving Bow to lead home Lowndes, Larry and Larry, and Tony Longhurst. It was a great race. A sensational season, 
and 95 will be even better. It was a great race. Mike Raymond, I just spotted you on the balcony there with Dick Johnson and John Bow. That's the most dangerous position in motorsport at Bathurst. You tried it one year, didn't you, Bruce? <laughs> one year and only one year. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I dodged a few this year as well. Mike, when the great race is great, and Bathurst was this year, it does the sport a lot of good. Yes, I'd agree with that. Uh, this year's race was fantastic. The closest race ever in the history of the event. And, you know, looking ahead to 95 for the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship, there are even more drivers coming into it. New teams, Alan Grice is back as a regular, Mark Larkham, any number of them. It really is going from strength to strength. What about some of the achievers in Australian motor racing that you've listed for us that perhaps didn't get into that rap because they're not as high profile as some of the others but are people to watch? Certainly. Craig Boyce from New South Wales who was third in the World 500cc Speedway Championship behind Sweden's Tony Rickardson and uh, Hans Nielsen from Denmark. Neil Bates for the second year the Australian Rally Champion, Barry Graham of New South Wales, the Australian NASCAR Champion, Gary Brazier, the Australian Sprint Car Champ, Kim Ashkenazi, the top motocrosser, and Tony Longhurst, who also had a marvellous season winning the Australian Two Litre Championship and then saying he wanted to go V8 racing for 95. I think ironically, Mike, it wasn't a bad year for Formula One. I say ironically because it was a shocking year at one stage with Senna and Ratzenberger, but with Mansell winning the last race, Schumacher, Hill, the... Uh, Prospects are good for next year, I feel, for some worthwhile competition. Yes, it'll be interesting to see who winds up at uh, the Williams team. Uh, there's a lot of talk that Nigel Mansell's there. But I think if you ask the 208 employees of Williams, uh, you'd be lucky to get uh, 207 votes for Nigel Mansell. I, I think Mansell uh, might find himself on the outer. And uh, finally, Mickey Doohan, your Sportsman of the Year in motorsport. Uh, can he do it again? I think so. Undoubtedly, Mick Doohan has to be the Sportsman of the Year. I mean, if you think back over the past three years uh, of the tragedy and the fact that uh, he was lucky not to lose a leg, to come back and to dominate totally from the front uh, throughout the season, wind up with nine wins, uh, I don't think there was a better performance anywhere. Mike, thanks for all your efforts throughout the year, particularly on uh, the Shell Touring Car and the Great Race. We'll see you next year. Yes, and good luck to you uh, and your lovely wife today. You could be the early father Christmas. <laughs> good on you, Mike. Mike Raymond.